Lim Kok Chen. Saya berkhidmat di Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Bukit Mertajam di Pulau Pinang. Uh, hari ini disebabkan saya mengajar subjek uh, kimia dalam subtopik sel kimia yang melibatkan konsep yang abstrak. Jadi saya menggunakan pendekatan pembelajaran secara mastery. Dalam pembelajaran ini, pelajar diberi peluang untuk belajar mengikut kadar ataupun kesesuaian mereka. Kemudian soalan-soalannya dikemukakan untuk bagi mereka menguasai konsep. Pada masa yang sama, beberapa soalan yang mirip sama diulang kali untuk membolehkan mereka menguasai konsep dengan betul. So today, I'm going to introduce to you the new terms what we call as the electrochemical cell. So before that, maybe I will share with you what is the meaning of electrochemical cell. We say that electrochemical cell is a device that can either generate the electricity from the chemical reaction or another way around, we use the electrical energy to produce the chemical reaction. Then, inside the electrochemical cell, we can divide into two. One, we call it electrolytic cell, whereby we already learned. Number two, this is the mystery cell. So before that, can anybody uh, tell me what is the meaning or maybe uh, the energy conversion that involved inside the electrolytic cell? Anybody? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Ivan? Electrical energy to chemical energy. Yes, correct. Okay, so the electrolytic cell means the electrical energy change into the chemical energy. And today, we want to learn another way around, whereby we want to use the chemical reaction to produce the electrical energy. So, maybe anybody of you ever heard before any terms that related to this mystery cell? Voltaic cell. Okay, voltaic cell is a good thing. Right, so today we are going to learn about the voltaic cell. This is the objective today. At the end of the lesson, we are going to, number one, describe the structures of the chemical cell and also the DNA cell. Number two, we are going to learn how the production of the electricity from the simple voltaic cell. The last one, we are going to in details the reaction that occur inside the cell in order to form the electricity. So this is the learning outcomes today. And before we start, I want somebody to recall back what we call mnemonic we learned in the electrochemical series. Right, anybody can try? Or maybe Guibin, can you try? Popstar can make all zebras in town like his car, MSG. Correct, okay. Thank you very much. So now we maybe we have a short break and we are going to do some simple laboratory activities. You have a lemons, then you have to insert two coins. Before that, when you want to insert the coin, make sure that they put a hole by cutting using the knife. Bear in mind, the knife is very dangerous, then don't hurt yourself. Right, then number two, before you put the coin inside, I have the sandpaper. So you have to use the sandpaper to clean the coin on top of the white tar, not on the table. Okay, got it what I mean? Right, then what we have to do is, we want to try what happened to this particular gadget when we put inside two coins, is there any voltage that were coming out through the voltmeter? Then after that, we are going to retry again. Another one, when we connect two different metals, or another, what we say is copper or iron is another thing, then what happened to the voltmeter reading? Okay, ha, like you may start.
organization saying that when the lamp is lighted up, that means there is a chance to have the electricity. Okay, just now you already finished your activity, right? So now we want to recall back again what you get inside here. So for example, just now I asked you to check by using two lemons, okay, to connect whether you connect to the voltmeter or you connect to the LED. So now we want to brief a little bit on your result. Okay, number one, when you put two coins together, anybody get the result with voltage? No, no right? Okay, so when you get two coins together, you don't have any voltmeter reading. But when I ask you to change, okay, change into different metals using the zinc strip, so you get a reading or not? Yes. yes, you get a reading. Okay, so from here, we want to do the generalizations. Hey, why when I use two coins together, I cannot get a reading, but when I put two different metal, I get the reading. When we have the simple voltage cell, that means that we must need the condition. So what is the condition? Can everybody raise up from here? Okay, can you highlight for me what is the condition that you need in order to form the electricity? Anybody want to try? Yes? Oh, ah, yeah, okay, like, Sen Yong. Two different better um, electrolyte. Yes, we need the electrolyte, thank you. Hey, correct. So that means in order to form the voltage cell, we need the condition there are two. One, we must have two different metal. Number two, we need the electrolyte. So this is what we call the simple voltage cell. Okay, now how the voltage cell works? How the voltage cell works? Hey, then number one, we say that the metal located on top of the electrochemical series will become the negative terminal. So now I want to ask some of you. Hey, just now I have the zinc, I have the copper, right? So based on the location, I want to know which metal will act as the negative terminal. Uh, Henkai, can you try for me? Between the zinc and the copper. So which metal is on top and which one will become the negative terminal? Can you try? Cannot, never mind. Okay, how about Sandeep, maybe can, I can help him? The zinc is in the negative terminal and the copper will be in the positive terminal. Okay, correct. Zinc will go to the negative, negative. terminal. So uh, maybe Prasad, can you help him? When he said become negative terminal, why? What's the reason? Why Sandeep said become negative terminal? According to here. Sir, because zinc is more electropositive than copper. Correct. Okay, because zinc is located on top, when whereby it is more electropositive, then it will act as the negative terminal. This is the rules. Okay, number two. Metal of the negative terminal will tend to lose the electron. This second phase is for us normally to write down the half equation. And the last one, we say that the cation around the positive terminal, they are going to gain the electron. So these are the three phases that you must memorize. Uh, do you know why a more electropositive will become the negative terminal? Now we want to go in detail. Just now we say, okay, located on top, there will be the negative terminal, right? So now why? The problem is why it becomes the negative terminal. Let's end. Okay. Can you further explain to me what is the meaning of more electropositive matter? What do you understand about more electropositive matter? <coughs> so over here, for example, this is an electrochemical series. When I say more electropositive, so what does it mean? Anybody want to help uh, Liang Xian? Okay, you want? It's located on top. Yeah, okay, it's located on top. Thank you. So when we say more electropositive matter, that means the matter must be located on top of the electrochemical series. Okay, back over here again. Why we call it negative terminal? The moment the metal loses electrons, so what happened to the electron? The first, the electron will initially gather around the metal. Okay, after gather around the metal, this will make the metal become negatively charged. Then after become negatively charged, then they will act as the negative terminal. So let's have a look on this diagram. Now we want to go in detail. This is the simple voltage cell. Hey, number one, we have the phrase. Metal located on top of the electrochemical series will become the negative terminal. So now my question is, among magnesium and copper, what is the negative terminal? So anyone can try or I ask? Uh, okay, All right, Dugger can try. Magnesium. Magnesium become the negative terminal, okay. I don't know whether it's correct or wrong. Okay, let's try. Uh, how about others? Or maybe Taranis? I think the copper will be in the negative terminal. Copper as the negative? Okay, like class. To you, what's your opinion? Amongst uh, magnesium and copper, which one is the negative terminal? Magnesium. 
magnesium, correct. Because magnesium is located on top of the electrochemical series. Then, now the metal of the electronegative, I'm uh, sorry, the metal that uh, is the negative terminal will tend to lose the electron. And now we want to see the reaction inside there. How? Because we are using the magnesium. So, from here, you will see that this particular magnesium atom, they are going to lose the electron to turn into the magnesium ion. When they turn into the magnesium ion, they will release the electron. But the electron is not going inside the solution. The electron will be gathered around the magnesium ribbon. That means the whole electrode will become negatively charged. That's why we say that the metal will become the negative terminal. Hey, the last one. Now inside there, we have the sodium chloride solution. The first sentence we say is, metal located on top tends to become the negative terminal. Second sentence we say that the metal of the negative terminal will lose the electron. The moment the electron is loose, so the electron will move from the magnesium ribbon, go to the copper plate. Last sentence we say that cation around the metal is going to gain the electron. Now my question is, inside the sodium chloride solution, what are the cation that present inside the solution? Or maybe, uh, uh, Yubing, can you try? What are the cation inside this sodium chloride solution? Hydrogen ion and sodium ion. Correct, thank you. Then among these two ions, hydrogen ion and sodium ion, if we compare the electrochemical series, so who is located at the bottom among sodium and hydrogen ion? Which one will be at the bottom? Will become the hydrogen ion. Okay, so when hydrogen ion, that means just now we say metal located on top, they are going to lose electron. So the cation that located at the bottom, compare, compare, uh, comparison, so those who located at the bottom will be gaining the electron. That's why now you can see that inside this diagram, it shows that hydrogen ion is going to gain the electron rather than the sodium ion. Okay, then we have the equations. From the equation, it shows that two hydrogen ions will combine together to become the hydrogen gas. But before that, we have to look in details. First, the hydrogen ion, only one hydrogen ion, they are going to receive one electron to become one hydrogen atom. Another hydrogen ion, again, they are going to receive one electron to become the hydrogen atom. After that, these two hydrogen atoms will combine together to become the hydrogen gas. Now, uh, we try to have one question over here. Before that, maybe I have to give you the handouts. Maybe we have to start jot something. Okay, ha, can pass around. Thank you. Okay, hi. pass around. Okay, okay ha, for the extra paper, ha, one group one, one group one. Okay, thank you. Apabila saya menggunakan kaedah pembelajaran secara mastery, di mana saya mengemukakan soalan, Pada masa yang sama, soalannya mirip sama apabila saya bertanya kepada pelajar, pelajar boleh menjawab mengikut kepada pengalaman yang uh, ada pada mereka.